everyone, and welcome to Bourbon Battles, where I'm Joe. And I'm Chad. Hey, I hope you caught our last episode, which was the first episode of the Bottled and Bond Tournament. Budget Bottled and Bond. Budget Bottled and Bond. And here in just a second, we're going to throw a wrench in the spokes and talk about some other things with this tournament. Okay. It's going to be really cool. So as we work through this, we're going to get it right into the next uh, next battle in the tournament. Uh, you know what we're drinking, guys. This is more uh, Budget Bottled and Bond. Uh, round one, Evan Williams bottled and bond beat Jim Beam. Chad and I did not agree on that one. I actually thought that Jim Beam was a little bit better. So that's really interesting. I'd like to revisit Jim Beam bonded at some point with some other things because I really, really like that. Uh, it's no surprise that Evan Williams moved on, and I'd be a little surprised if they didn't move on farther. But we'll see. We'll see. Uh, so today we're going to get into some other things. So if you didn't watch that first episode, go back and do it. And while we're standing here rambling on about a little bit of nothing, like and subscribe on Facebook. Go find us on, on YouTube. Find us on Facebook. Chad's got the Instagrams. Are you working on the TikToks? No TikToks. Chad Tick, says TikToks no TikToks. TikToks aren't going to happen. Snapchats? I don't even know how. I don't, I don't either. Where to begin? I, I wouldn't either. <laughs> so the way this works is if we both uh, agree on one, that moves on. If we think it's the better of these two. If we don't agree, we've got a little scoring system to determine who the winner is that moves on, which is what happened last time. Uh, so, yeah, let's... Uh, if, you, if you guys are tuning in and didn't see the first one, you should, you should watch from the beginning just because it's going to be a, a simple progression of your budget bottle and bond winner. Yeah. So So these are all budgets. Is now as good a time as any to tell them about what we're going to introduce? Let's, let's taste number three. Talk about between three and four? Maybe. What do you think the proof on that is? Can I'm gonna you tell guess, by smelling it? Yeah, I'm going to guess around 100. That's where I put it at by the nose is 100 on the nose. Hey, if you did, if you don't know about how what bottled and bond is, it's 100 proof under government supervision, same distilling season. Chad talked about that in, uh, in the previous episode for this tournament. If you want to know more, Google it. To the Google we go. To the Googles. Google's free. I like the smell number one. I really like the taste of number one quite a bit. Well, let's give it a shot. You want to? Look at the legs. Take it as a shot. Is that what you said? I like number one quite a bit. You want to tell them what we're going to do uh, as a, how we're going to complicate this tournament? Yeah, I'll tell them. Let so we've got a lot of requests in a short amount of time and there are people who would like to see us do uh, some, I don't know if I'll say higher end, but some harder to acquire bonded whiskeys. And some more expensive. They're, they're typically more expensive. Which comes along with harder to acquire. But anyway, so we we decided that we are going to branch off and we're going to do, we're going to finish this budget bottled and bond t tournament. And then we're going to have a hard to find and or an allocated bottled and bond tournament as well and yep. then you want we, to tell them what we got coming yeah we've got uh we've got an eh taylor single barrel bonded uh, a mckenna 10-year bonded a wild turkey 17-year masters keep bonded i'm looking forward to that a heaven hill bonded which is not really easy to find in central indiana but I don't know. It's a bit of a unicorn here. I've never. I don't know that I've ever seen one on the shelf. I don't know that uh, Heaven Hill allocated any to Indiana, but it can be found if looked for hard enough. Um, old Forester bonded, and uh, uh, Old Fitz decanter style bonded, which can also not be found in Central Indiana. But if you go to Bardstown, you can probably one day get lucky and find one of of that list. I've never really seen anything on the shelf in Indiana. The McKenna 10 I have seen on the shelf in Indiana, and the Old Forester I have seen on the shelf in Indiana. Old Forester, yes, I apologize. I have seen that. <clears throat> but So what we're going to do, whoever wins that smaller tournament, will face off against the budget winner right. in a special episode. And me being me can only hope that the budget winner wins everything. But... 
I love that. Does that one, number one taste like so smell like soap? Not a lot of ethanol. I think there's yeah, I think there's more than one than two. Oh, for sure. Got water out here. Let's, let's right call here, bud. a little water because it's going to help me decide maybe. Two's, know, two's a little spicy. Is that right? Yeah. You like spicy? Yeah. It depends on what kind of spice you're talking about. One of these days I'm going to dump some uh, hot damn and some whiskey and have you taste that blind. We won't go there. That's silly. Are you talking spicy like rice spice? Are you talking like white, right. white pepper? or Are you talking like sage? What are you talking spice wise? Kind of like a citrus twisted sage seed. <laughs> a citrus twisted? With a, just a little bit of dill. No, it just tastes spicy, a little hot. Yeah, maybe a little rice. That's a Kentucky chew. chomp, chew. Yep. You ever do that? I do, every time I taste just about. You know, we talked about it in the first episode. Chad and I were both pretty close, even though we picked different winners. We kind of rated them very similar. I, I think we, we would agree they were both very good with the Jim Beam and the Evan Williams. These are also not very easy to uh, They're not. to pick a winner. I got a feeling we will probably be different on this one as well. We like different. Hopefully you're following along at home. You went to the liquor store and you picked up all eight of these. And you're doing your own blind. If you did, I'd love to hear how your whole bracket, yeah, spread out. I we encourage you guys to do that. If if you can if you can so um, afford and or acquire the the whiskeys that we have chosen for this tournament, if you guys want to do that and go along with us and and give us your feedback or only if you, tell us what you guys think. Only if you have three, even if you only have three or four of these, blind them up against one another and say, hey, you know, Joe was right. I had Jim Beam over Evan Williams. I don't think that would be the consensus of the bourbon Could community. Be. but You never know. Yeah. Let us know what you think. We'd love to hear that stuff. Uh, we're starting to get a lot of suggestions on battles. We've got a pretty exhaustive list. Uh, we will try to work through some of those. Uh, whoever asks for the old crow against Blanton's is probably not going to happen. Do you have any old crow? I do not. It is hotter than a firecracker in this room. I know a guy who does. Who? Somebody I know? Oh, yeah. Does he like it? Oh, yeah. Let's just call him Sam Elliott. You want to? Sam Elliott? Yeah. I don't know who you're talking about. Jim? He likes that stuff, huh? I could pick either one, honestly. Well... You could, but you're not going to. I'm not going to. So let's go to this. I'm going to well, say. Let's just hang on a second. Let me finish this. Don't, don't get in a hurry. There's no reason to be in a hurry. Look at the legs on that glass. What do you think about that? That's the viscosity of the liquor. You can tell when Joe's had a lot of viscosity because he starts talking stupid. Uh, this is tough. I, I I know where I'm at. I'm going to say one of these, my choice is better, but it's close. So that's a one. And I'm going to rate the whiskey as a five. So I'm at six total. Where are you at? I'm at eight total. So if we're different, Chad's is going to move on once again. I think you're inflating the numbers. Could be. One, two... Three. We're different again. So Chad's is going to move on. You pick number one, so that's the winner. That's, yeah, it's actually number three and number four, but we'll we'll do number one so and number two. Here's what I picked. I picked very old Barton. I'm very old Barton. It's from the Barton Distillery in Bardstown. It's owned by the Sazerac Company, and uh, they make Barton makes a ton of whiskey a ton of cheap affordable whiskey and it's not all bad but they I, make a bunch of it i like to drink their 86 proof stuff and if you guys if you guys ever get the chance to go to kentucky go to bardstown 
and go to the Barton Distillery. You can't miss it. You know, the very the good thing about the very old Barton is if you have a $20 bill in your pocket, you can get a bottle of whiskey and supper. That's a true story. But I will say this, the bonded very old Barton is becoming more and more harder to acquire because I believe that they are realizing that people are buying it up so they're they're I don't know if they're doing away with it I don't know if they're if they're reducing production but it is harder to find than it ever has been did you get that in Indiana I did I, I there there is I know where there's 15 bottles right now within driving distance of where we're at oh you have to let me know because I need one of those I've, I just picked it and round it's still round one but match two right so no I really enjoyed that uh this is what Chad picked in the album. And, and like I said, I, I said number one, I, I thought this one was a little better. And I, I think that it's just above average. Yeah, I, I said yeah, they were average. So here's what Chad picked. 1792 bottled and bond. So funny thing about this, it is also a Barton distillate. And Probably the hardest one to acquire on our list. I would, uh, uh, well, no, it all depends. I mean, if, you, if you're looking, if you're in Indiana, the benchmark is easy. If you're outside of Indiana, the benchmarks, you can, you're not going to yeah. find it. Yeah, this will be on a future episode, the benchmark, which I don't know if you remember or not. Hopefully you watched all of our episodes. If you haven't, I really encourage you, instead of watching Netflix tonight, to binge watch all the Bourbon Battles episodes. You know, the benchmark foolproof is getting... Crazy talks. People think it thinks it's as good as uh, Stag Junior. It's not, but it's pretty good. Uh, but it is. From what I, is it still exclusive to Indiana? As far as I know, it is still exclusive to Indiana. But <laughs> I, I can't. I don't know that. I don't know. I don't know what Buffalo Trace is doing with it, so I can't answer it. Hey, if you're if you're watching this video in another state, we we get a lot of comments out of Arizona, believe it or not, Georgia, Florida, and different places. Send me an email at uh, bourbonbattlesblind at gmail.com. Maybe we'll do some swapping with you on some benchmark foolproof. We can send some drams one way or another. Yeah, we'll figure something out. So, like I say, I know it's extremely hard to get in other markets. Pretty easy here. Um, but, yeah, it's pretty good stuff. So, we have two Barton distillates, but uh, I guess the 1792 is going to move on. 1792 is going to move on. So, Chad and I did the first about eight or nine episodes, and we agreed on 100% of everything. We haven't agreed on anything since. since. Well, we agreed on the new Riff uh, Barrel yeah. Select pick from uh, uh, Wise, Wise Guy. Guy Lounge down on Mass Ave. If you haven't watched that video, go back there and check that out. Go down there and see Brennan and his staff. Get you a $5 uh, Old Fashioned on Wednesday. Try something you never had before. and Free whiskey. Oh, yeah. Free whiskey from Brennan and Wise Guy Lounge. You just have to watch the video to figure out the key to unlock that treasure. So, hey, you know, one thing Chad and I want to stress very much is we have a blast doing this. We the like labels. drink. Huh? The label. We don't, we got to tell them. We, what, what, you know what the greatest thing about all this is? We drink these blind. you know why? I do. Tell them. Because Joe doesn't give a rat's ass what's on the label. That's exactly right. We don't care what's on the label. And this, blind is the best way to drink whiskey. Until you find something you like. I agree. Until some guy puts a bunch of Lafroy in your glass and makes you sick inside, make you all green inside like Nelson. <laughs> hey, drink bourbon responsibly with your friends. Have a good time, but don't drink and drive. Please don't drink and drive. It's definitely not worth it. Until next time, we're Bourbon Battles, and I'm Joe. And I'm Chad. Tune in to see who moves on in the next set. The next. Uh, what do I want to say? That, 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 that. <laughs> we haven't had much. That was it. That's all we've had. Who moves on in the next match? And then we will. Do we want to introduce the higher end stuff just in the middle and mix it all in, or wait till one's over? We'll wait till one's over. Yeah, tune in for that. Where we're going to have E. H. Taylor, McKenna, Wild Turkey Masters select. They already know. We already told them. We'll tell them again. Heaven Hill, Old Forester, and Old Fitzgerald. We've got uh, two more rounds in the budget bottled bond tourney. Hey, look. So here's another cool thing we can talk about while we're. Wrapping this up because most everybody's already shut this off anyway. Okay. Get with your friends that are into bourbon. Chad was up in where'd you get this up north? Wisconsin. Wisconsin. North, that's look, right. look what he found for me. A bottle of Old Fitzgerald Prime. It's fantastic stuff. 
We might as well tell them what you paid for that. Yeah. Nine dollars and forty nine cents. So for all the flippers out there, not a hundred and nine dollars and forty nine cents. Nine dollars and forty nine cents. And I can't help it that it's not available in central Indiana, but if you go to any state around us, you can get it for ten dollars a bottle. So you don't have to pay a hundred dollars a bottle. I buy it in Ohio. And I love it. Because it's not a hundred dollar bottle of whiskey. Right. As long as you don't give a rat's ass what's on the label, you can get into some of this stuff and really enjoy it. We're going to do a series, I think, another tournament uh, called the Heaven Hill Yard Sale, where this could pop back up. Fair enough. That'd be fun, won't it? I don't know. We'll see. Throw in some Heaven Hill Green Label. Can't get it. Yeah, that's fun to talk about. Yeah, Chad got me all kinds of good stuff. Look at there. Bam. All cheap. Cheap, cheap, cheap. But good. But good. There's your Blanton's right there. You know what? I was down at the uh, Evan Williams, what do they call that thing on Main Street in Louisville? The Bourbon Experience. The Bourbon Experience. And this old man that does the tastings over there got me to try some different things. And he looked at me and he said, son, do you want me to teach you a lesson about bourbon that nobody will talk about? And I said, I sure do. A lot. Of, he said, a lot of good bourbon's got a screw off lid. Makes sense. What's the lesson? You don't have to spend a lot of money to get good bourbon. That is the lesson of a screw off lid. That's it, bud. They put screw off lid. Your head on. is a screw off. Most of the most of the stuff that's cheap has a screw off lid. Most, not all. You did pick that Weller Special Reserve down at uh, Wise Guy Lounge. I did. I think I'd get some air conditioning in here. It's about 117 degrees in here. <laughs> hey. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Shoot us some comments. Until next time, we'll see you all real soon. Bye, guys.